If this case we're talking about today was a hip-hop artist, it would be Flo Rida. If it was your best friend, it would be the friend that is easygoing, and I say, why, why, why? That's because we're looking at going with the flow, by which I mean the NZXT H510 flow. Yes, <laughs> concept soup. <laughs> Back with more PC builds. Yes, it's the H510 flow by NZXT. They finally punched over the holes in the front of their top selling H510 case. We're going to be putting it to the test today, having a look around the case. We've got some nice, pretty cool hardware in this today, something a little bit different. You know, we've got the we've got a fractal liquid cooler, those kind of things going to make this nice and exciting. So if you like builds, if you like a bit of gaming, if you like a bit of cringe humor, you're in the right place, baby. So we'll be getting into the video, but we've got to have a word from our sponsor first. The sponsor is, as always, me me uh, and it's jcpccustoms.com which is my business selling gaming pcs as you can see i've got lots of pc hardware behind me and that's because i build gaming pcs for a living um what a sweet life it is but we're not talking about me we're talking about the pcs and there's three ways to get yourself a gaming PC from jcpccustoms.com. Number one is the ready to go PC section. These are already built. They're ready to collect, ready to ship out. Optimized spec, look really nice, and just usually very, very well balanced is the focus of these. Then we've got the configurator pages where you can pick from a list of things that we have available to us. And then you can sort of just build the burger yourself that way. So it gives you a little bit more control over what you want. But if you want the maximum control, or if you want something for a very specific use case and you want to use the custom spec service and this is where you fill out our Google form you just go through you can pick any parts you want we can even do some soft loop liquid cooling for you absolutely no problem at all and if you need it for a specific use case this is the way to go so that's your three ways to get a gaming PC from jcpccustoms.com and you know they're good PCs because you see me build them here on the channel and you know that I know what I'm doing I'm gonna be picking parts that are high quality that are going to last not gonna be falling into those traps that many pre-built providers fall into so that's the end of the plug for jcpccustoms.com on with the video so H510 flow, as you said, it's the H510 with the holes in the front. So hopefully this is going to address that one problem that you have with the H510, which is, of course, the really poor airflow, because it usually has to come in at that 90 degree angle. But in this case, hopefully just getting that air straight through the front. Um, so let's go through the spec that we're going to be putting together in this build today. We're gonna, then we're going to take a tour of the case. We're going to show you a build montage, a bit of gaming, and then some thoughts at the end. So the spec we're using today, it's a nice high-end spec but not going too bonkers with it so our cpu today is the ryzen 7 5800x 8 core 16 thread cpu why do we choose this because this in my opinion is the gamers cpu this is absolutely perfect for high-end gaming so 5600x from ryzen is also really good a 12600k from intel is also really good With the 5800x you're getting those two extra cores really good if you want to do a bit of streaming a bit of other work as well um, also you do get a boost in some games as well um, but it's really really good value and there's really not much point going for the ryzen 9 chips unless you have a very specific reason that you want to do that so that's why we've gone for the ryzen 7 today the cpu cooler we have is the fractal lumen 240 millimeter argb liquid cooler i've never used this before but it looks really clean that's fractal's thing isn't it it's keeping it really clean so i'm looking forward to seeing how this one looks the motherboard is the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Elite AX V2, so that's the one with Wi-Fi built in. The V2 just means that it's got the USB-C front panel connector on it, so it's going to work out really nicely. Perfectly capable of running this chip, um, even a Ryzen 9 5900X will be fine on this board. Decent features, it's just a nice sort of mid-rangey type board. The memory, we've got 32 gigabytes. that's two lots of 16, of G-Skill Trident Z RGB. DDR4 3600 speed at CAS latency 18, which is pretty good, sort of middle of the road type thing. You know, 3600 is nice because it's going to tie in nicely with the Ryzen Infinity fabric, but this isn't like Samsung B die, it's not anything really posh. But to be honest, for gaming, it's not 
really that much difference unless you're really trying to crank the max frames. But if you try and do that, you want to spend money on other ends of this spec anyway rather than the memory. So I think this is going to work really nicely. It's going to look really, really choice as well. Storage. Now this is one of those sort of hidden gems that I really love in terms of storage, especially when the price is good. So this is the one terabyte Kingston A2000 NVMe SSD. Now why do I like this? Um, basically when I got them they were about £70, so that's a good price to pay for these. And unlike lots of other ones in this price range, it's got DRAM on it. And DRAM is something that helps SSDs perform a lot better, especially when you're starting to fill them up. So it's a really good buy this one. Um, it doesn't have the blazing fast speeds, but we don't need the blazing fast speeds for gaming. It's just not really required at this point. So I think we're going to do really nicely there. One terabyte is plenty of storage space as well. The video card in this build is the Gigabyte Gaming OC RTX 3070 Ti. Really nice graphics card. You're sort of knocking on the door of the 3080 here, but much lower price considering the current market trends. It's going to work really nicely. Gigabyte Gaming OC models are fantastic. I really think they're just really what gamers want something that's not bad but not super high-end either so you're getting really the best of both worlds the case of course is the nzxdh510 flow we're showing the white version here but i'll have some shots of another one i did in the black version with a slightly lower spec uh, as well just so you can see a bit of both power supply is a corsair tx750m 80 plus gold power supply but any 750 watt decent power supply will be fine in this build um, gold, semi-modular, you know, all that good stuff. Um, we've got um, some nice fans going on here. So I got just a spare Cooler Master A RGB fan that I had in stock. Then you've got the two RGB fans that come on the Fractal Cooler. So we've got a total of three fans. We've also got some nice blue and black custom sleeved cabling. Of course, you can change the color to whatever you want. Um, but I thought that would look quite nice in this build, give us a bit of contrast. And something else that I really like is this Lian Li anti-sag system, the GB001 or whatever it's called. Um, I don't know if it's shown in the video, but I do use these for the longer graphics cards to stop them from sagging, and it's very low profile and looks very nice. So that's the spec. Um, as always, we uh, go into a build next, but because it's a review type video, we're going to be taking a look around the case. So let's take a look around the case, then a build montage. See you there. So we have the PC up on the uh, on the workbench here. We'll just take a look around the inside, and it's pretty much exactly the same as the H510. Comes with a couple of fans, um, and that's about it, really. It's pretty much the same as the H510. For your liquid coolers, if you're going for 240 or 280, it's going to have to go on the front. There's no room for it at the top, which is something that I find really disappointing. I think... You know, if you're going to go for a refresh design, properly refresh it. Let us put a 240ml liquid cooler on the top of this case and really take advantage of that airflow path on the front. I think that would have been a nice feature. Comes with two black fans, so if you're doing a bit of air cooling, then at least you've got some free fans that come in the box. Um, but otherwise, you know, fairly spacious, but not super spacious, which is pretty nice for a nice compact build. So I think that's going to look really good. That nice clean NZXT design language coming through. And going around to the front here, you can also obviously see there's the um, the front panel there, the sort of perforated front panel there. It's going to allow us to have much more airflow going through than the standard H510. This case pretty much the, makes the regular H510 obsolete. Looking around the back here, they've got some sort of cable management routing system like they always have. You've got your front panel connectors, some room for a couple of hard drive, um, three and a half inch hard drives here. You've got the accessory box, that kind of thing. With that um, cable management area, I actually just unscrew all that and take it out. I don't find that routing pattern very useful at all, actually. I find it gets in the way more than anything. I would prefer, just like they have on Fantex cases, just a few Velcro ties, just you know, pop it down there, no problem. There's no need to go really posh with the cable management. It doesn't matter. No one's ever going to see this. So, um, yeah, you also got room for a couple of two and a half inch drives here on the back as well. So you've got plenty of room for storage criticism I have with a three and a half inch base is that they don't have those nice slide out trays so you have to take the whole cage out in order to install a hard drive I find that that's pretty archaic at that at this point in time so I would like to see them sort of revise that a little bit other than that cable management room is fine plenty of room in here to do your cable management um, so yeah that's it pretty fun let's get on with the build and I'll see you at the end
there it is build done what do you think i think this actually is really nice build i think i wasn't really expecting it to look quite this nice um but i think it turned out really well i also added a little rgb strip to the top there i believe i think that's like a game max viper or something like eight pounds on amazon um i thought that was a good addition gives it a bit of extra flair but overall i think this just looks really sweet I think it's like nice dark with a bit of RGB in there and I think the theme looks really really nice. Um, I'm really happy with how this one turned out in terms of the looks. But looks are only part of the equation of course. We've got to actually test it out in some games. So let's run some games on the screen and we can talk about the performance that we experienced and then some thoughts on the case after that. Let's play a bit of COD Warzone. This is just at 1080p. Uh, on sort of what we call the competitive setting, so a couple of them on high, some of them are on normal, some of them are on low, um, but pretty much it's what most competitive gamers are going to be wanting going for is if you're going for that kind of high frame rate type thing. And here you can see in the real battle royale we're getting about 175 frames per second most of the time, and that's pretty nice considering you know most people go for a 165 hertz monitor. It's going to really really be nice and sweet there. Um, really the only way to get those really high frame rates, you're talking you know 220 plus, you're going to need the RTX 3090, you're going to need the top end CPU from either Intel or AMD, you're going to need Samsung b die. you're going to need to throw everything at this to get it over 200 frames per second consistently in Battle Royale. So 175 is actually a really good result uh, for this particular setup. Now moving into Apex Legends. Um, it's actually, even if you unlock the, um, the FPS counter, it has a hard cap at 300, and we're knocking on the door of that 300 cap all the time. So this is really going to max out um, Apex Legends, even on the high settings that we're playing on here. So you're going to have absolutely no problems running one of your super fancy 240Hz displays on this game. So happy, happy days. And now how about Fortnite? So Fortnite being quite a light game, you might want to be going for those super high frame rates, and that's what we're going to get. So playing on the competitive settings, which is pretty much everything on low apart from the draw distance which we put on the maximum setting we're getting you know 388 fps most of the time that's pretty dang high so even if you're one of these crazy people that goes out and buys 360 hertz monitors and you're like a top esports competitor this is going to really serve you really really well so you can see how this is a gaming powerhouse all round. Now I think we also tested this one out in Red Dead Redemption 2 though we don't have any um, clips of that but that was getting an average of 179 frames per second in the built-in benchmark and that's pretty good as well that's a pretty nice score I think for this kind of spec you're really getting uh, good values there. So overall what are my thoughts on this build? Well actually as I said the aesthetics came in really nicely. Where we were being let down a little bit is on the temperatures so we're on the cpu temperature test our max temperature was 90 degrees in prime 95 that's actually to be expected from a 240 mil liquid cooler and a 5800x these things run quite hot and that is kind of what i would expect um, in gaming you're getting temperatures in the low 60s so that's perfectly acceptable and it's not going to be affecting the boost clocks of the CPU in any way whatsoever so CPU temperature is absolutely fine. The problem that we have is with video card temperatures so it's not a problem in, in the way it's actually going to make any difference to anything it's just if I was to compare this case against something else maybe with a top mount so something like maybe a Corsair 4000D airflow something like that you're going to get lower temperatures on your video card in those kind of cases because in this case you have to front mount your AIO. That AIO takes up all of the space, the radiator just blocks it all, so the only air that's reaching the GPU is actually coming straight off a nice hot radiator. So that's why you get the increased GPU temperatures, the increased video card temperatures. But that said, because you've got a nice cooler on this gaming OC, we're only getting 73 degrees, which is perfectly fine. And just like with the CPU, it's not going to be affecting the boost clocks of the card whatsoever. That kind of stuff doesn't happen until you're hitting mid 80s. So you'll be absolutely fine with this temperature. The only difference with temperature being a little bit higher is, of course, the noise level is a little bit higher. Um, so that's something to consider. But this look of this case is something that is very unique and is certainly better than the regular H510. So I would certainly recommend this if you want this look. It's a really good case for that. Performance wise, yeah, happy. Looks wise, happy. Um, just a couple of things to bear in mind there. It's not a case that I would use personally because I need more storage options. I want something with a bit more airflow, I want something a bit larger. But for those kind of people, this look 
it's only going to be achieved really with this case. So I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know what you thought about the video. Actually, a lot of the parts have got affiliate links at the bottom. So if you want to help out the channel, you can shop at Amazon using those links. Though just bear in mind, it might be cheaper elsewhere. So make sure you're, sh you're shopping around and like you always do. Custom cabling, you can buy that direct from us if you like as well. That'd be something that can help out. And if you're looking for a gaming PC, it's jcpccustoms.com. Thank you very much for watching the video today. I'm going to say goodbye. I'll leave you with some lovely footage. Catch you later.